right. Next to previous. All right. Hello, everyone. Today we're talking, continuing our theme of verbs, changes, new verbs, APIs here. And we're talking about counters. So this is the concept that has been presented on the mailing list. Um, those of you looking at the slides can click the link and see the entire proposal. Um, these uh, counters are a little different than the counters we have today. Most of the counters are full device counters. So you can count how many bytes or packets or congestion control or other sort of whole device, whole port sort of concepts through, uh, I think mostly through SysFS today. These are programmable counters that are controlled through the application uh, that the application can connect to specific application objects. And then it counts events related to that specific object. And the hardware does all the counting for you. There's no software involvement, uh, at, least, at least in the Mellanox implementation. This is sort of a um, vendor-specific behavior in the API design. Um, we expect this to be useful both for debugging applications and, and kind of this runtime diagnostics. Excuse me. So we hope in a really long term that we'll be able to do something like we see in uh, the NetStack where you could have a tool that could connect to a QP in your process and tell you about it. Like, am I experiencing RNR acts? Am I experiencing retries? What, what sort of is my status? And this could be done sort of externally. It's kind of like you'd use GDB or strace. And um, long term, this is where we would like to get to. Uh, it, it requires some of the shared features that Alex was talking about yesterday in terms of being able to access objects in other processes and, and things like that. But uh, it, I think it would be really handy for a lot of applications. Um, but today, for, for debuggability, it would have to be the self-debug concept. So maybe I'm an MPI and I have a debug mode. Uh, I can annotate and, and monitor my QPs and, and, and see what kind of network behavior I'm getting, if it's good or bad or, or negative. Uh, and then it, it turns out it's very useful for things that are in the kind of the raw Ethernet space where it's DPDK, it's doing flow monitoring. It needs, you know, runtime counters just just for runtime stuff. Maybe maybe I'm monitoring a switch port or a virtual switch port or VM or something like that, and then I, I need all of them. And, um, and you can easily see how this could um, pivot into this sort of new world we have, where there's lots of monitoring in your infrastructure and they're drawing graphs and, and computing instantaneous numbers and looking for um, you know violations or performance anomalies. So the API is, is reasonably straightforward. Um, we have this concept of a counter object. The application has to create a counter object, uh, which is where your, sort of your, your number is stored. Uh, a counter object has a number of slots, and you can, you can direct each of the slots to, to sample a particular thing. We, we call the thing that you sample a sample point. And then there's a simple API to give me all of my, my slots, give me all the values from the counters in, the, in my counter object. Um, the AP, the creation is, you know, standard verb thing. You, you give it a context and it, an initialization struct, and it gives you a verbs object. Um, pretty simple. I think the init struct in the proposal today is currently empty because there's no attributes. They, they dynamically size depending on how many sample points you attach. So there's not a lot uh, that needs configuring. And in the standard verbs, we want the sample points to be extremely well-defined. So, I mean, if I define a sample point for bytes, you know, where we, we expect it to be defined what bytes means. It doesn't include packet headers, does it not include packet headers, you know, to that kind of detail. And since, the, you know, we expect that hardware differences will exist, um, the DV API in verbs can be used to specify your own hardware-specific sample point that has your hardware's unique definition for what it is you're counting. Um, the initial patches, I don't think, are using this, but I would expect it will come. We'll see. The initial RFC is, is of course, very simple. It's just packet counters and octet counters that are, that are intended to be extremely well-defined. And you can attach counters with this very straightforward API where you just basically give it your flow group and um, the kind of counter you want to attach to it, and that's it. It's, it's really that simple. Um, in this case, there's no sense of direction because the flow groups are in intrinsically directional. They're either ingress or egress. Uh, but when we get to more uh, different 
attachment points. We'll start to talk about input or output packets, for instance, on a QP, uh, things like that. So the idea is that each object that you want to attach something to will have a verb's entry point to do it. So this is the one for flow objects. There'll be one for QPs. Perhaps we'll, we'll be able to develop them for CQs, MRs in the future. Uh, like an MR, uh, a counter might count the number of bytes read and written from that MR, which could be um, very useful for performance analysis. Um, the read side, we've decided, uh, at least in Mellanox hardware, we'll do a kernel syscall to get the data out. Um, this is part of the way our device works. It seems to be the best thing. We, the API does not really mandate how this is supposed to be implemented. It, it, the hardware can be pretty flexible. Um, like it's not required to be a snapshot. So in networking, you sometimes have this concept where I want a snapshot of all counters in my, my space where they're kind of taken within a very short time window, like maybe a couple of nanoseconds across the entire device. And then you can do kind of correlated analysis because everything is time synchronized. Um, we're not excluding this, being, this kind of idea of being implemented in the drivers, but it's also not required. You know, the, the default implementation is intended to be very, very general without any, um, any flags. And if you're familiar with the IB counters, these are not the crazy ones. These are non-saturating 32 or 64 bit values to just keep counting. So they're the useful kind of counter, not the useless one. And they always start at zero. So very simple again. Uh, there's this concept of cached, which is intended to speed up counting if the device has some sort of concept of this, whatever that means. It's, it's left kind of nebulous. Um, API-wise, it just means that you're not going to get the most recent value. You, you accept that when you specify it in exchange for higher performance. It's, it's kind of nebulous and unclear what it might be used for, but apparently it's important for some, uh, some use models. And the API is extremely general, but that doesn't require all the drivers to support it. So the user is going to have to kind of propose what it is they want to sample and see if the device can, can do it. Um, there's some restrictions in our initial implementation. Uh, you, can't, you can't necessarily assign two sampling points to the same index. The API allows this, and the intention is that it would be some automatically, but we may not implement it, at least initially, depending on need. Um, not all of the objects should necessarily support all of the sampling kinds, like byte counters or, or packet counters may not be uniformly supported everywhere. Um, and there may be rules restricting when you can make the sampling point and when you can't, like QPs may not support dynamic attachment in the initial versions. So there's, there's going to be a lot of space in this API where you get enops up in the initial hardware support. Uh, the extension with this design is to leave a lot of room to grow. So if you know, people find interesting uses for this, interesting use models, you know, they, can, they can ask for things and say, you know, we'd like to do, be able to do this combination of stuff, and it can be evaluated. We don't need to change the API. We don't need to change the kernel interfaces. We just, it's just driver work. And of course, other um, providers in the ecosystem can implement different things along with sort of very, this very general thing if their devices have different requirements or different restrictions. So it's intended to support pretty much everyone. Um, and like I sort of alluded to earlier on, we would like to, to see this work with um, more objects. I'm, I particularly think MRs would be a challenging and interesting thing to see, uh, particularly with something like an ODP MR where it covers your entire process space. You could get a, you know, a single metric that showed you how much traffic your MR is doing how much you know, DMA traffic, because you, you, today we really have very poor visibility into things like RDMA reads and writes from a remote node. You can't monitor that. It's kind of very invisible. Um, and of course, having more counters. <laughs> I think, then, I think C, uh, QPs will be next um, in the thing. And that's my 13 slides. Look at that. We're on time. <laughs> Are there any questions? Well, people are standing up, but they're not talking, so. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, what's the sampling frequency, roughly? If they're not sampled, the, oh, okay. the counters, the hardware counts the counter at, at every discrete event. Okay. So the hardware doesn't lose anything. Um, the sampling frequency is defined by the API um, based on how often they call the, the reading API here. Right? So if you want to sample once a second, you call it once a second and you get, you get your counter snapped off every second. If you want faster, you can go faster. And design-wise from a general API, you know, there's no limit to how, how quickly you can sample them, although I think you should expect that there will be some cost to retrieving this data. Uh, and that will be very you know, unique to each hardware that's implementing this, uh, how much cost there will be. OK, thanks. Uh, this would be very useful. Uh, one question. Uh, let's say if I'm a job who opened a QP or sending some data, would only I be able to get the uh, information uh, related to my process, or can, for instance, uh, uh, a process with uh, administrative, let, let's say, running as root, can get the information as well? So uh, this is what I was talking about at the beginning, this concept that an external process could attach and monitor objects inside, you know, a, kind of like a, a victim process. Uh, we need a lot more infrastructure to get there. I mean, the kernel and the hardware can do it, but it's, it's kind of the access control things and, and, and getting um, kind of verbs, objects in your process to be able to do all the work. Um, it's something I'd like to see because I think it is really important, but it's not going to be in the first release. Sure. Um, and, but the API is sort of conceptually designed to allow for it. Sure. Uh, a follow-up with... Right, so, yeah, Tahi is saying tomorrow we have RDMA tool, and, and some of the future directions for RDMA tool is to use at least the hardware counter features to, to extract counter information. Um, sure, um, and as a future direction, um, do you think uh, you guys are planning to expose this uh, to be accessed remotely? So yeah. let's say um, le um, through the UMAD interface or something like that, can I query the H uh, HCA and get that? Okay. Probably not, no. The U um, the way the counters are defined, they're so pro programmatic, yeah, and UMAD is really focused on kind of device-wide counters. Okay. So it would be a real challenge to see how you'd fit that into. That's not to say that it doesn't stop someone interested to build their own UMAD responder mm -hmm. that could you know, re retrieve the counters you're interested in them and package them up into a, an application or building an SNMP provider sure. for uh, net SNMPD or something like that. Like that that's kind of outside of the scope of the verbs part of it, but it's, it's certainly something an administrator would do. And when you start to talk about the cloud environments where you have monitoring agents like Prometheus running around collecting all their statistics, it's, it's pretty easy to see where you might want to insert some of this counter data into Prometheus sure. so that you can monitor your cloud workloads and, and look for problems. Sure. Thank you. All right. So, from the API that you presented, it sounds like there's going to be kind of a new call for every type of object that you want to be able to attach counters to? Yes. This is, this is my contribution, I think. Uh, okay. the, uh, the Verbs API, it's, it's definitely not simple. And it's, it's definitely kind of suffered from this concept where we'll only have one entry point, And then we'll have a thousand arguments and a thousand different combinations and flags and structs and things that can tailor it for ten different completely orthogonal um, applications. So here we're going in a different direction. The, the, the API is actually very, very simple. Um, you know, it's just got basically the one argument that maybe isn't even required. Maybe we should get rid of it. And then we can you know, have more APIs as we add more objects. And so this is for a flow group, but you would anticipate you know, attach counters, Q pair yeah. as another call for I want yes. to just see what's happening with this yeah. Q pair, and you'd pass a Q pair object. Right, and you know, Mellanox has its own plans for, for when it will roll out counters for different objects, and obviously any other vendors that want to add right. counters for their hardware, I mean, they're free to, to work with the community and add their own sampling point um, signature right, for, for an established verb object. So if somebody says they want to do MR because their hardware can do it, then absolutely come on and create an IVV attached counters point MR. So we'll the IBV, you. oh, sorry. I would say, you know, it's a community process, so anybody can propose the new entry points. Sure. Um, IBV counters, 
that object, however, might be different depending on the object you're connecting to, right? Like a Q pair, you have send, receive. Memory regions is, like you said, how many bytes you're... Right. you're so are there going to be different IBB counter yes. definitions? Yes. Okay. So like I said at the beginning, each of the counter definitions, like packets or bytes, is intended to be really well defined. So if you can take that, that definition, say, for packets and extend it to something like an MR, then great. You can continue to use the packet's name. But if your MR has some other concept, um, I'm not sure what it would be a good example, like maybe, maybe number of um, uh, middle packets or something. I don't right. know, kind of yeah, yeah, just way out yeah. there. Then you would need a new counter label to use with your MR. Right. Uh, but the concept is we don't want to create like a huge number of counter labels. Like we don't want to necessarily have IB counter packets, MR, QP, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Um, we want them to be selected to the object based on the, the, the attached counterpoint API that they use. Okay. So it's sort of, it makes the and API slimmer and a little easier to understand, but, you know, it, again, it depends on which object will support which counters and, and, and which hardware implements which. So it's... Right. That was my next question is, how do you know which hardware supports, like, uh, you know, a Q pair counter object versus a memory right. region so counter object. And this is following kind of our new thinking. Because I can see this kind of exploding a little bit yeah. where, you know, one vendor's hardware can support more types of counters on a Q pair versus another. Yeah. And, you know. Yeah, well, our thinking is the new thinking in verbs where instead of having, you know, a ton of capabilities and a very complicated kind of capability language, uh, it's just try and fail. Okay. So try to do your attach with the the thing you want to do, and if your hardware doesn't support it, it returns um, whatever it was over here. E Enosup. Enosup. Yeah, yeah, okay. Or eval, depending. And then your application will say, well, I tried my best. Maybe I'll try a backup. Maybe I have a backup. You know, maybe, you know, maybe I wanted byte counter special, but I can accept byte counter different special if, if that's the way it evolves. Okay. Then the application would be responsible to try its combinations until it found something it can accept or just not use the feature. Um, so this is very easy to have discoverability, and it's very easy to code, and it's very easy to understand. The trade-off is you can't know in advance what the hardware will support. Right. right. Hmm. So why Jeff? don't you just have a, a, like a query call? Uh, so Jeff asks, why don't we just have a query call? And I think the answer to that is it hasn't really been seen necessary, <clears throat> excuse me, necessary from an application perspective, and writing the query call design would be pretty elaborate, right? Because you, there's a lot of different objects and verbs, and it's not as simple as, well, we have an MR. Not quite. As you saw with some of the other presentations, we now have UMRs and, and, and a whole variety of different kinds of MRs on, uh, like the memory, um, device memory presentation talked about device memory MRs, so there's lots of different kinds of MRs with different properties, and it may not be the case that all of them can support all of the counters uniformly. So instead of trying to have a query API, we're just going with this approach. And this is, this is seen in a lot of the new verbs APIs where it's try and fail. And if that's not good enough for you, come back to the community and say, I need a query API. I need a cap bit instead. And then we can evaluate it kind of on a case-by-case -case basis if it makes sense. Um, All right, thanks. Oh, I think Sean. Yeah, OK. Have you considered, um, could this be adopted for using like in completions, for example? I, yeah, I think so. Uh, I don't know if our hardware, Mellanox hardware can do it, but there's a lot of interesting statistics you can collect about completions, right? You can, you can collect numbers, like just basic number of completions that come through, completions of certain types. I mean, did you have a specific metric you wanted to measure? So I, I was actually thinking more in terms of, you know, instead of getting a, going to a completion queue, um, actually reading counters, to know when operations are done. Oh, you mean instead of, uh, no, I certainly don't think that's been thought about. It's kind of complicated. Huh. Yeah, I'm not sure that fits in with the verbs model. But also, remember that the counter read is a kernel call. So it's quite expensive. Uh, I'm not sure you'd gain any performance by trading a kernel syscall for looking at the completion queue, um, unless you had a particular use model in mind. <laughs> 
All right. Huzzah.